Hello everyone, today I'm back at it again with another devlog, so let's get right into it. After taking part in this year's GMTK Game Jam, we found out that Noun Jam was going to be hosted again a few weeks after. At first, we weren't even sure if we would participate, but I thought that it would have been a missed opportunity if we had just let it pass by without our participation. However, unfortunately, this time, Fish Soup and Lenny were not able to participate with us. So it was only me and Liko, previously known as Licto, from the former team. Just like last time, this jam only allowed up to 4 people to participate as a team. So we got 2 more people to join us. Our Scrap, who is an amazing 3D artist, and Wolfenrad, a very talented musician, artist, and a game developer whom you might know from my previous collaborations, like Torch Guy. And we are Team Mount, with the team buckled up and ready to roll a new game dev adventure, The Jam Begins. The theme this time around was Corruption. At the start of the jam, I was already pretty sleepy, but a quick breakfast and some coffee put me back into the mood of working. Yes, I say breakfast because the theme was announced at 5am for me. Anyways, I kind of forgot how we exactly came up with the final idea of the game, but what I do know is that we pretty much dove straight into development without too much overhead. I just knew we wanted to make something cool. And that something cool ended up being a top-down shooter about robots taking over, or should I say corrupting the world. You'd be playing as a kid who finds the power glove, capable of causing immense destruction and taking down the robots. Yes, that's totally not a reference to the Maximum Glove. <laughs> it's a pretty nonsensical story, but hey, the story was not our main priority this time around. I do remember that we did consider other ideas, some of which were related to a different interpretation of the word corruption, but there was nothing too solid in mind. So the first thing that I had worked on was the player's movement. And this time, we were gonna go for a top-down 3D style gameplay. So that was pretty simple to implement. At the same time, our scrap was already working on modeling the player, the prototype version of which I already integrated into the game. Yeah, it looked pretty damn cursed. Next, I went on to working on the enemies, while Liko worked on coming up with the power glove functionalities and implementing projectiles and a crosshair for aiming. And what better way to prototype enemies without using some BEES? They also definitely didn't resemble characters from a very popular game. Essentially, the behavior of the enemies were the same way as in some of my previous games like Ask Ape, where they would wander around at first and would start approaching you when noticing you in their path. The last thing that I did for the day was adding a few effects like bloom and some cool text pop-ups for when the enemies exploded. And so that was pretty much it for the first day, and judging by a commit I had made during this time, I was already pretty tired, but luckily, I always had coffee with me. So, when the day was coming to an end, we went into the VC to work more on the game. Wait, scratch that. Instead of working on the game, we had a whole ass dancing party, and other people in the Melon Jam server hopped in the VC to witness our doings. Yeah, it was pretty wild. The rest of the night I spent chatting with other people in the Discord server. Thinking back now, I could have worked more on the game, but I felt like talking more with new people and just having fun. <laughs> Starting off this day was kind of hard, since I basically had no sleep the other day. But a 3am breakfast and a sip of tea had charged me up for the day up ahead. In terms of the levels in the game, Originally, we planned everything to take place on rooftops, where enemies would spawn one after another in multiple waves. Pretty simple, but later, I thought it would be cooler if the game started off on the ground area of a city. Our scrap was done with the player model, so I integrated it along with its animations. Man, she really looked uncanny and goofy. He then worked on the enemy models. Speaking of his models, I also spent some hefty amount of time drawing out art assets for the UI and animating those UI elements. I mean, all I basically did 
for some of these UI elements is to take screenshots of the models that our scrap made and edited them in Photoshop. However, in my opinion, they turned out great, albeit a bit funky. I designed the glove UI to be very dynamic and made it display stats in a pretty creative way. Each finger, except the thumb, would represent the amount of ammunition you had for a specific projectile. We basically made the power glove a complete powerhouse, so much so that we gave it an overdrive state. Over time, it would build up heat and enter a state at which it would be able to emit a powerful blast. But in order for it not to be an utter mess to use, each finger or shall I say weapon had its own cooldown. So to effectively use the power glove, you had to switch between your available weapons and manage your own resources. You may be wondering, well, how do I tell which finger corresponds to which weapon? Well, that's the neat part. You don't. You get to explore each of the weapons that Liko and I had continued working on. Speaking of Liko, he also made a proper task cave for us to finally concentrate on our tasks. Yes, we completely forgot that we got task cave, so thanks Liko. Wolfrad, on the other hand, became available to work on some music, so I sent him a list of music tracks that we would need for the game, and he began working on them. I wrapped up the day by beginning to work on the integration of different types of enemies that we were going to have. Wait, wrapped up? But Dan, you said you didn't sleep at all, right? I mean, that's what the title says, right? Yeah, let's, let's, let's not talk about it. So, it was 1am and I took another break and had some food. Later that night, my 3am motivation had suddenly kicked in and I made a masterpiece. Yes, I drew some cutscene still frames for a cool intro story scene. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's not that cool I guess, but I had an excuse for my terrible art. You see, this story would be told from the perspective of a child. And so my art skills are that of a toddler. So, so there you go. And to top it off, Liko even ended up voicing over the voice lines I made for the main character. And they were hilariously good. This is me. By the time I wrapped all of that up, the final day had already begun. I mean, days didn't even matter anymore since I kept losing track of time anyway. So I decided to take a bit of time to think what's left to do and I wrote out everything on the note because I was already starting to doubt that we would actually finish the game. We, we still had no proper level of <laughs> The other day I had already told Arscrap to work on the model for the boss and it was turning out great. And I was really excited because I wanted to animate his moves. And funny enough, we all thought having Jeffrey Bezos with his corporation Amazon be the final boss would be pretty funny. I mean, it's not like he will ever play the game and find out. As soon as Arscrap finished making our big boy Jeff, I made a rough sketch of how I envisioned the levels to be. Originally, I wanted all the levels to take place in one scene, but we had to cut out the boss section to be a part of another scene. In hindsight, it would have been cool to have a more smoother transition between the two stages with some camera work, but we were already running out of time anyway. Yeah, on this day, I pretty much spent most of my time designing the waves inside the level, while Liko designed the main menu and our scrap was working on the models of the environment. It's kind of funny, as I feel like the levels were something that we had to do from the beginning, but at least we had the gameplay pieces intact already, so it was definitely easier in that aspect. As soon as Wolf and Ride had finished up his epic tracks, I integrated them into their appropriate scenes. So everything leading up all the way to the boss section took me like an entire day to finish. And when time came to work on the boss part, I had roughly 5-6 to six hours left only. Mind you that we also had to work on the ending cutscene of the game as well. And well, at first I was gonna draw one myself, but since our script was free, 
I told him to render up an image of the player standing on top of the dead Jeff bot. Rip Jeffrey, the CEO of Amazon. Anyways, I immediately began developing the behavior of the boss knowing I had no time left. And even though I had animated the boss earlier, I still had to tweak the animations to fit the area where he was located. And I also made some more attack animations because I thought only having one attack would have been too stale for the gameplay. So I gave the boss two stages where on the first stage he alternates between slamming the ground and launching enemies from his shoulder pads and as soon as his health would drop to 50%, subtle smoke particles would start appearing from his mech and he would become way more aggressive with an additional attack where he would shoot out bullets from the turret inside his mech's mouth. And implementing all of that surprisingly took roughly about 2 hours only. The rest of the time we spent polishing up the game to the maximum. I thought of places where players would potentially get confused so I added more tutorials and visual feedback to top it off. And boom, we were done. I did it! <laughs> wow, I was shaking when I hit the submit button. It actually took me several attempts to get the build finally working and we barely made it in time because of some bugs that we kept finding after camp was built. But with that out of the way, we were finally done. I don't know how I didn't deteriorate. The, the, I can't even speak anymore. I don't know how I didn't deteriorate on the last day of the jam, but I surely felt mentally, emotionally, and physically tired afterwards. Despite being fully drained, I felt proud, knowing that I basically tested my limits. After finally garnering back some desperately needed sleep, I finally felt mostly alive and decided to check back on the game. And well, it turned out pretty solid, albeit it was literally a goofy disaster when it came to its premise and its relevance to the theme could have been a lot better. However, to this day, I still have no idea how we pulled this game off, as in comparison to the last Melon Jam we did, this was nothing compared to it. In Melon Jam 3, we were all aware of what we were doing and we had no issues with time management. I mean, we didn't have to use up all of the time we had left by the end of the jam, but in Melon Jam 4, we just kinda rolled with whatever. To say it was chaotic would have been an understatement for sure. Regardlessly though, I really enjoyed it, and that I say was the best part. It was actually really fun making the game. I also did a Twitch stream to celebrate the end of the jam, and enjoyed playing other participants' games as well. And that was it for yet another one of my jamming adventures. But damn, what about the results? Oh yeah. A few days after the jam I went on a trip and I really started to forget about the fact that the jam was ranked. Or I guess my memory became that of a fish after not sleeping for 3 days. But when time came for the results to be finally announced, lo and behold, we receive an announcement from the host of the jam, Joey, saying that we got first place in the advanced category. Wow. I guess my lack of sleep really did pay off. And I just want to say, well, like that 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 was that was great. I, I really didn't expect that. So before I wrap up the video, I just want to say a huge thank you from our team to the hosts and judges of Melon Jam, the Cupertino Game Dev Club, for organizing yet another awesome game jam event. Personally, it was life-changing. My sleep schedule was permanently broken. But in all seriousness, I had fun collaborating with my teammates and I was able to meet some passionate new faces through your community. And lastly, I want to thank you, yes you, for watching this video. 
and i guess i'll see you guys next time peace